Seema, are you upset or are you here now, Seema? No, I'm here. Why were you upset? Like, oh, I don't know. There's like 30 people before us. No, no, I don't like, uh, I was waiting for 30 minutes. That's all. No, because she was asking. How long have you been waiting for a godly husband? Um, what? How long have you been waiting for a godly husband? You want a godly husband? <laughs> so if you can wait 20 years for a godly husband, why can't you wait an hour for me to answer your question? No, no, so no, it's okay. I didn't complain. I didn't complain. Okay, go ahead, <laughs> Um, I messaged you on Skype, if you remember. Well, you gotta remind me. I get 50 million people who message me. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I was asking you about like a uh, dream interpretation. Look, my English is not my first language, so is it your third mess language? Up your or um, second language. So, what's your third I'm language? From the Middle East. What's your third language? I'm just kidding, Turkish, I'm but like... I'm Syrian. You're what? Syrian. Assyrian or Syrian? <laughs> no, Syrian. Not You're from Syria. Yeah, I'm in Syria. So good. What? So what's your question, sister? Go ahead. Um, basically, I was Muslim before, but I loved Praise Islam. God, you loved Islam. Glory to Jesus Christ. <laughs> glory to Jesus. Um, she I was like Islam. a strict Muslim, Muslim before. Yes. What? I said glory um, to Christ. Loved Islam. Go ahead. I am. Like, I was very strict. I used to pray and stuff. And then when I found out about, like, hadith. Yeah. <laughs> about hadith and, like, verses in the Quran. I just, like, changed my mind completely. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> um, what happened was, like, I started... Hmm? I said, I have low self-esteem. You're laughing. No, go ahead, sister. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. Um... What happened was I wanted to learn about like uh, Christianity more. <laughs> Why can I? Yeah, it's a <laughs> Please, I'm trying okay. to like talk. All right, go ahead. There it is. Um. Okay. Um. So I wanted to pray, and I asked God, like specifically, I said, God, if you like either uh, Yeshua, that's how we say it in Arabic. Sure, or exactly. Allah. That's how we say uh, it. Again. Exactly. And uh, like, give me a sign because I want to follow the right path, and I don't want to go to hell. And as okay. soon as I fell asleep, I don't know if this is a real thing. At least that's what my friend told me. My left ear started like ringing. Yeah, I remember. You did tell me that. Yeah, you said yeah. me. You said, your left ear started ringing. Yes, go ahead. Is that like actually a spiritual awakening? That's what my friend told me. I don't know if uh, like it's an I, actual thing. I really can't answer that. I mean, that mm -hmm. left ear ringing, I can't say. I don't know mm -hmm. if that's a sign or not. But <clears throat> mm -hmm. when you pray to God, don't stop waiting for God to guide you. Just because, let's say, mm -hmm. you had a ringing in the ear, that doesn't mm -hmm. mean, okay, what does this mean? I don't know. Keep seeking God. And God will make his will clear to you. Now, obviously, you've already left Islam, right? Or I don't know. Have you left Islam? Even though you read the Hadith, you're troubled by it. Yeah, like, I don't know. Um, you know about the sex slaves and like yes. how men have like 72 hoodies? Yes. Like, how can Allah, like this Rahman Rahim, allow this is what I'm trying to say. Like, no, he can't be. Yeah. Islam abuses um, women, right? You see that. Islam. Yeah. Yeah. The great women abuses women. It's and it's like a man's religion. It's all about lust. And... What was that? Go ahead. It's like about lust. Yes, it is. But in contrast to the teachings of Jesus Christ, Jesus honors women and shows that you're precious and valuable in his sight. So the way you're going to know the truth is by comparing the teachings of Jesus with the teachings of Muhammad. So seeing what Jesus says, and seeing what his followers said about women and their value and dignity will make you appreciate that the author of the Quran cannot be the same God revealed in Jesus. It cannot be. They're two different gods. Yeah. Okay, I'll give you an example. I want to show you some verses from Jesus. Tell me if you found anything like this in the Quran. Okay? I'm going to show it to you. You tell me if you think you can find something like this in the Quran. Are you ready? Uh, is it okay if you like displayed in the screen? Yeah, because my internet's like really bad. Oh no, definitely I'm gonna display them for you on the screen. Okay, are you ready? Thank you. you tell yeah. me 
after hearing the Quran being recited and reading the Quran and teaching mm -hmm. Muhammad, tell me if there's any comparison to what Jesus. Now, this is Jesus speaking. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Look what he says. Matthew mm -hmm. 11, 28 to 30. Come to me, this is Jesus saying. Come to me, mm -hmm. all you who are weary and heavy laden, meaning tired. Mm -hmm. of life. If you're tired and you're sad, come to me and I will give you rest. Take my yoke mm -hmm. upon you. The yoke is what you put on when you know if you have a field, like you have <clears throat> a field where you want to plant, you'll see you'll put these cows and you put something on their neck. That's called a yoke. You, you know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about? Yeah. So Jesus says, put my yoke on you, carry my yoke mm -hmm. on you, together we'll carry it, and learn from me. Let me teach you, let me guide you. For I am gentle, I won't hurt you, I won't harm you, I won't embarrass you, and I'm humble in heart. Mm -hmm. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Do you have anything like this in the Quran? No. So like I've read it. Jesus? He's saying to you. Oh my God, my internet is so bad. No, mm -hmm. What is Jesus saying to you? He's saying to you, if you're tired, come to me, right? Yeah. So are you tired and just confused? Yeah. He says, come to me. Take a step. Ask me. Ask me and come to me. Now watch this one. I'm going to read some more for you. Ready? Okay. I'm going to post it. John 14, verses 1 to 6. Do not let your heart be troubled. Don't be afraid. Don't be anxious. Believe in God. Believe also in me. You trust in God here mm -hmm. with the Father of Jesus, but now trust in me. Now look at his promise. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. See, if there wasn't many homes in my Father's house, I would tell you. But there are. I go to prepare a place for you. I have a place prepared for you if you mm -hmm. trust in me. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come to you. If I go and prepare a place for you, if I go and prepare a place for you, right? I'm mm -hmm. going to go and prepare a place for you. I will come again. See, he's promising you. I will come and receive you to myself. I will come and take you to be with me where I am, that you, you may be also. And you know the way where I'm going. So one of the disciples says to him, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How do we know the way? Now watch the answer. When the Muslims pray, Allah guide them in Sirat al-Mustaqim, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Guide us on the straight path, right? Yeah. Here's Jesus' answer. Jesus said to him, I am the way. Mm -hmm. Ana, I am Sirat al-Mustaqim, al-Tariq. Mm -hmm. I am the way. I am the truth, Al-Haq, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So Jesus is saying, if you're tired, come to me. I have a place prepared for you in my Father's house. And I am the way to take you there to be with me and my Father. Do you see anything? No. Like that? no. Okay. And like in the Quran or like in Islam in general, you feel like you're inside this box and you're trapped. Like... Exactly. When I prayed, I didn't like feel anything. I didn't feel any connection to God. Um, I have something really important to tell you. Um, yes. A few days ago, I was like praying, and like, no, to Jesus basically, not to Allah. So you prayed, and, well. yeah. And um, I didn't see him in the dream. I felt the presence of him. Hallelujah. So, uh, so you guys uh, hear right? She prayed to Jesus, and finally, she felt something real. And then today, this is like really crazy. Like uh, that was like a few days ago, and I, and I prayed some more, but I didn't like get in any like signs. So I was like, okay, like I wanted to go to a church today. That was like the first time ever. And um, I was like, I'm hoping maybe like if I go to this church, maybe like I will feel something or I will get a sign. And when I went there, uh, the church was like empty and no one was there. And I went with a friend, actually. And while he was explaining to me one of the icons, and there was a lady. She was, like, uh, she was not like a worker. She was just like a woman coming to pray and stuff. And she was like, oh, that's like, what a coincidence. Because the, the priest was just talking about, like, uh, the story about the icon. And I kept on, like, talking to her. 
and she was super sweet and um she kept on like telling me about Jesus and his teachings and about the Bible and um she actually told me to t to pray with her and we prayed together to a saint I don't remember his name to be honest but um she prayed for me and it was super nice and uh uh she gave me a pastor's number I'm going to go and meet him tomorrow and she told me like I know because I live in the Middle East so she told me to tell the pastor everything and he would tell me like what to do exactly because I'm still confused so I think me meeting this lady has like a connection and she told me to not worry about anything because God will arrange everything for me amen and, yeah and so now did you watch you asked for a sign. She asked, answered, don't worry about it. God will arrange it. And I just read mm -hmm. the verse for you that Jesus come to me and I will give you rest <laughs> and take my yoke upon you. And I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. And now here's another promise. I just want you to hear the words of Jesus because he is speaking to you. He spoke to you through that lady. Now he's speaking to you through his word. Jesus saying, I will not leave you as orphans. Yatima. Mm -hmm. You will not be our orphan. You will not be left alone. I will come to you. Now you prayed to Jesus and you felt the presence, right? Yeah. I didn't see him, but I felt well, you him. felt the presence, right? Yeah. Because he came to you. That's what he just said. I will mm -hmm. not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Is it a coincidence when you prayed to Allah, you didn't feel anything, right? But when you prayed to Jesus, yeah. you sense a presence there, right? Yeah. Because here, here's look. What did he just say? I will come to you. You asked and you felt the presence, right? Mm -hmm. So who came to you when you asked him? Uh, like in the dream? I didn't see him. I just like felt him. I don't know how to explain it. Like I don't I'm remember. Sure. Sister, don't let me hang myself with my shoestrings. <laughs> I know you didn't see him. But who oh. did you ask? Jesus. You... And... When you sense the presence, is it a coincidence when you asked him? No, I don't think that's a coincidence. came okay. to you, when you prayed to Allah, did you ever feel someone's presence come to you in a dream when you prayed to Allah? Um, yeah, but that was like two months ago, but it was a bad thing. Um, okay, when so I you felt started, evil, right? Yeah. I will when you prayed more. in Jesus' name, what did you feel in your dream? Mm, it felt like kind of peaceful. Kind of peaceful? It is peaceful. <laughs> stuck for Allah, get stuck for Allah. Okay. <laughs> okay, can I tell you something? But um, I first, uh, help me, let's get to one point. I want to help you see okay. what happened. You mm -hmm. just said when you prayed to Allah in a dream, you felt the presence that was evil. Yeah. I then you prayed to this. Jesus <laughs> and you felt another presence that was peaceful. Yeah. Are you not seeing the difference? Yeah. Um, so when you prayed to Jesus and you felt the presence, but this one made you feel at peace, right? Mm -hmm. Because here's what Jesus said. I'm giving you his word. John 14, 18 to 19. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Mm -hmm. So when you prayed to him, he came to you and you felt peace. And I'm going to show you why you felt peace in a minute. After a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live, you will live also. Because he lives, you will live for it with him. Now, when you're praying to Allah, in a dream, you felt something evil, right? Yeah. But when you prayed to Jesus, you felt the presence. You didn't see it, but you felt it, and it was peaceful, right? Yeah. Here's why. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. John 14, 27. Here's why. Are you ready? Yeah. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. Do you understand who appeared to you? Mm -hmm. Who appeared to you? Jesus. So with peace. You your prayer answered. Yeah. Jesus appeared. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now what was your next point? Um. My next point, when I was like first started to have doubts about Islam, and I started looking into Christianity, I have a Christian friend here, and uh, she was like willing to teach me. And as soon as I told her, like 
can you help me? The same night I went and I slept and I saw that my house was on fire and like people, <laughs> my house was on fire <laughs> and my family were, in... <laughs> Stop. were inside the house and I was like super scared in the dream. And I said the Shahada, like, why would I see this kind of dream? The Were you outside way? the house or inside the house? Inside the house. Okay, so the house was on fire. And then what happened? Um, basically, I was with my family. Okay. <laughs> why are you looking at me? I'm just saying. So what happened? Yeah, go ahead. Oh. Um, I was with my family, and we were all worried because the house was on fire. Why are you me? I'm not. It's, my face is funny. I know I'm ugly, but take it easy, sister. Take it easy. Um, the house is on fire. And I was, like, really scared in the dream because I was sure I'm going to die. So I said the Shahada. And what happened? Then the dream stopped and I woke up. You understand? So why would I have this dream right after, like, talking to my friend? About, no, I'll like, tell you what burning. the dream was. Hmm. Your family is Muslim. You're Muslim, right? Yeah. As My long as Muslim. Muslim, as long you you're a Muslim, you're headed to hell. That's what the dream meant. Oh, you understand what the dream meant? I think so. Yeah. Because you're all Muslim, and your house was burning, meaning Islam will take you to hell. Mm -hmm. You get it? Yeah. You understand? You, I want you to see it, not me. I'm in a house. My family's in a house. We're burning. The house is burning. We're about to get burned. I say, Shahada, wake up. So the Shahada didn't save you from the fire. It was a sign. This is the path to hell. It's not the path to life. Yeah. I see it now. Yeah. Ashadu Muhammad Rasul Shaitan. Right. We get it? Yeah. All right. So you see. The reason why you saw that dream is to show you if you remain Muslim, mm -hmm. you are heading to hell. You yeah. are at to hell. So the choice is stay Muslim and head to hell or follow Jesus that when you prayed in his name, the presence made you feel peaceful. What gave you peace? When you prayed to Allah and you felt something evil or when you prayed to Jesus and you felt peace? No, I definitely felt much better while praying to Jesus. And when I went to the church, like, I felt comfortable. I don't know how to say it. Like, I didn't feel, like, nervous. Good. That's Jesus. Yeah. Because, again, remember what his verse is. Hold on. Jesus, if you come to him, what will he do for you? Here, look. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. So notice, when you prayed to Jesus, you felt the presence that made you peaceful. When you went to mm -hmm. church, you felt peaceful. Studying Islam, you felt dirty, and you couldn't stand it. And then when you prayed to Allah, you felt something evil in your dream. And you're in a house with your Muslim family, and your house is burning. It can't be clearer that this is a sign. This is the path to hell. Yeah. Uh, I was, like, worried at first. Uh, when I first saw that dream, I was like, oh, what if like it means that like I should stick with like Islam? And then when I found out even worse stuff about Islam, I was like, nah, like how can Allah allow this? I don't think oh. that's normal. Or If you want to be a man's property where he can do to you as he sees fit and share you with other three other wives and divorce you and he has the right of the children, Mm -hmm. Or he can have as many sex slaves for sex, then follow Islam. But if you want to be respected and honored and valued, <clears throat> where God says to men, if they're really Christian, to honor mm -hmm. and love you and respect you, because Jesus loves <clears throat> his daughters as much as he loves his sons, because in one sense, Jesus is not God the Father. He's the son of the Father, but he's our Father in that sense. He's the one who created us and gives us life then you follow Christ. Because here, let me show you the difference between the teaching of Islam and Christianity about women. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, I mean, I know first. one of them is that, like, if a woman doesn't want to sleep with her husband, like an angel will come and curse yeah. her at night. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, and the Hadith says that he will curse you. Allah will be displeased with you. And the whores of paradise will rebuke mm -hmm. you. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now watch. Are you ready? Let me yeah. show you the difference. Okay. This is the Apostle Paul, the servant of Jesus. 
Are you ready? Yeah. First Corinthians 7, verses 1 to 5. Follow me. Now, concerning the things I bought, which you wrote, it is good for a man not to touch one meaning. If you can be celibate, don't get married. Devote yourself mm -hmm. to God. Fine. But because of sexual immoralities, people can't control themselves. Each man is to have his own wife. You get married. No boyfriend, girlfriend, sex and marriage. But mm -hmm. man has one wife, and each woman is to have her own husband. One husband for the woman, one wife for the man, right? Mm -hmm. Now watch. The husband must fulfill his duty to his wife, and likewise also the wife to her husband. So the husband must make sure you are being satisfied and taken care of. Likewise, the wife, same with the husband. Now watch. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. But now look what else he says. So your body belongs to your husband, but then look what Paul says about the husband. Ready? Look at equality here. Look at the equality. 1 Corinthians 7, verses 1 and 5. Look at the difference between Paul and Muhammad. And likewise, also the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. So what? the woman owns her husband's body and the man mm -hmm. owns his body. It's mutual and equal. Mm. Stop depriving one another except by agreement for a time so that you may devote yourselves to prayer and come together again so that Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Do you see what he's saying? Husbands, the wife owns your body. You don't deny her intimacy unless you agree to fast and abstain but come together quickly. So you see the difference? The God of Paul, who's a slave of Jesus, says, tell husbands only one wife like a woman has one, one husband. Sex only in marriage. And tell husbands, the wife owns his body as he owns her body. So you better not deny her. Do you get more equal and fair than this? Yeah. Now, like I've seen the, some the parts of the Bible. Oh, sorry. Say it again. I said that I've seen like some bits and parts of like the Bible comparing about like how Christianity tells you how to treat your wife or like to treat women in general compared to Islam. Like in Islam. If you yes. don't wear the hijab, you don't smell the essence of heaven for 500 years. Yes, That's right. Kind of, yeah, I mean, you don't um, smell the perfume of uh, Jahannam where Muhammad is <laughs> for 500 years. Yeah, basically uh, the place of uh, the 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 72 Huris. I heard that like even Muslim women become the Huris. That's what I heard. Is that true? Yeah, I want to share that with you. But now, oh. did you see what Paul said about husband, the yeah. woman, the husband's body? Mm -hmm. Now watch the Quran. This is Surah Al-Baqarah, the chapter of the cow. I like the Quran. It, it's like a book about the zoo. It has chapters about animals. You have the chapter of the cow, the chapter of the bee, the chapter of the ant. It's like Muhammad was into zoology. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Got the chapter of the spider, the chapter of the bee, the chapter of the cow, the chapter of the ants. It's all about animals, dude. It's stuck for Allah. Okay. Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 223. You ready? Look at the mm -hmm. difference. The God that Paul served and Allah. This is what the Quran says to the men. Your women are a tilt for you. Your women are your field, like the property you own. Mm -hmm. So go to your tilt as you will. Plow into them the way you want and send good deeds before you for your soul and fear Allah and know that you will one day meet him. Give glad tidings, right, for believers, O Muhammad. Did you guys catch it, ladies? You see the difference, ladies? The Quran says to the men, the women are your field. Plow into them. You own them. They're your property, your field. Plow into them the way you want. The God of Paul says, husbands, your wives own your bodies. You don't just own them. They own your bodies and you better not deny them. See the difference here? Mm -hmm. So you caught it, right? Yeah. So there's a lot more I can show you, but you get it. Now, when you said, in Islam, it says a wife shall be one of the, yes, Islamic teaching, Sunni Islam teaches, if you're a good Muslimah and you pass the test, you know what your reward will be? <laughs> to be a fucking... <laughs> what you... A stuck for Allah gets stuck for Allah. <laughs> be careful, you're going to get me flagged. Imagine like... She, she said, all of your life. No, say like the Filipinos. It's going to be pockinger, man. <laughs> she meant to say pocking. Right, right. Why his mother pocker? All right, anyway. Yes, you're going to be part of the whores that mm -hmm. the men are going to deflower for all eternity. That's what so a reward. Huh? 
like imagine being good all of your life just to be like why right, what's wrong it says it's going to give you you won't need uh, breast implants because he's going to give you huge tits and and paradise I mean, you know it's for free no i'm serious the quran <laughs> says that the whores of heaven their tits are huge really you think mine? what yeah you, uh, you don't believe me huh <laughs> kawaab your tits will be kawaab, yeah, sister. Are you laughing? Do you think I'm yeah. laughing? No, I'm serious. What? Well, here, okay. Get stuck for Allah. Get stuck for Allah. Here, chapter seventy-eight of the Quran. Oh, in the Quran, yeah, it says that? Huh? In the Quran, it says that. Yes, chapter seventy-eight of the Quran, ayat thirty-one, thirty-three. If you read Arabic, you'll see it. It says you'll be your your tits will be kawaab. <laughs> kawaab. Here it is. Chapter 78, verses 31 to 33. Here. Surely for the God-fearing awaits a place of security, gardens and vineyards, and maidens with swelling breasts. Your tits will be huge. They'll be swelling. You won't be flat-chested. Free breast implants from Allah and His Messenger. <laughs> why are you laughing? Don't you? Why, why spend money here? <laughs> in paradise, is going to be I'm free. I'm sorry to not take this seriously. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, no. like yesterday or like a few days ago also, like so hadith that they stoned like a she monkey to death because. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have that hadith. I'll show it to people. You want to show me that? But no, honestly. Yeah. Well, don't get breast implants here. Allah has free <laughs> breast implants for you when you get to paradise. He's going to make your tits huge. And by the way, sister, yeah, don't use the F word. You're going to get us. You're going to get oh. us fuck out of here. Sorry. No more pucking with the word puck, please. Puck, puck, okay. puck, puck. Puck, puck. You're getting too excited. You keep saying puck, man. What's up with these Muslim puckers, <laughs> man? Okay. So in paradise, he's going to give you free breast implants. Are you ready for that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now you're talking about the she monkey. You ready for the she monkey? Yeah. <laughs> he's talking about the hadith where Muhammad, well, it wasn't Muhammad. It was a companion Muhammad says that there were a group of monkeys. They wanted to stone a she monkey because she committed zinna. <gasps> she committed adultery because they must, the monkeys also follow sharia. <laughs> <laughs> Why? What, what are you laughing at? Uh, all the animals are Muslims. Yes, ya akhti. Ya sister. Why are you laughing, man? All the, the animals, they're Muslims. They follow sharia. Don't you know they follow sharia? Even animals? Like, that's crazy. Like, that doesn't. Sal Bukhari. Here it is. I'm going to give you the link. Sal Bukhari. Mm -hmm. Narrate Amr bin Maymun. You know, my language, Maymun, means monkey. <laughs> no, I'm serious. We say yeah, Turkish, Maymun. Maymuna. In my language, the series will confirm. So it's Amr, son of a monkey. <laughs> okay. During the pre Islamic period, Jahiliya. Of ignorance, I saw a she monkey surrounded by a number of monkeys. They were all stoning it, stoning her because she had committed illegal sexual intercourse. She committed zinna. I too stoned it along with them. So can you imagine the scene, sister? Here's a man. He sees monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, hey, what happened? <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> what happened? Because he understands monkey language. So when he's saying, oh, oh, ah, ah, oh, oh, they're right. Oh, oh, oh. He's like, huh? And the guy's, oh, oh, ah. he goes, oh, oh, ah, oh, oh. and he went after her. And then they stole her. Right? Like the you monkey? You don't believe messenger? This is, uh, this is Wahi, sister. You don't believe in this? Yes. Get I stuck in for a law, sister. You're going to get stuck for a law. You've got to believe in this. Here, let me give you the hadith. You ready? Mm -hmm. You're like, man, are you serious? Yeah, I'm a Syrian. Here's the hadith. Guys, here's the link if you guys don't believe me. Here's the link right there. Sahil Bukhari from Sunnah.com. So here, send it to you in the private chat. You ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, you guys, so you see that. Now, do you want me to show you another one that you're going to like? Yeah. Did you know that Shaitan? He likes to piss in people's ears. <laughs> yeah. No. You know so that? We wouldn't wake up from the azan in the morning, right? Yeah, yeah. so, so you that, know that, right? Yeah. Did and you, you know, know that? Why? Go ahead, you're saying? 
Uh, basically, I read like a hadith that said like Aisha was talking to Muhammad and uh, she was telling him like, what if like a woman feels shy and he's like, her silence means consent. Something yes, right. Like. If you don't say anything, that means you want to get married. Yes. You're saying yes. You're silence. But talking about silly stuff now, before you get to women, you know, those Satan, he likes to piss in people's ears. You knew that, right? Yeah. Okay. Do you know why you, the Muslims, when they want to perform prayer in the morning, they snort water in and out of their nose three times? I'm not sure. Okay. I'm going to show you two, but before, but you promise don't laugh at Allah and his messenger. <laughs> okay. So right. in the morning, you used to pray, you would snort water in and out of your nose three times, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know why? Why? Because Muhammad says Satan sleeps in your nose and you got to flush him out in the morning. <laughs> what? Stuck for Allah, get stuck for Allah. Why are you laughing at Allah as Messenger? <laughs> Here, let me give you the hadith. You ready? Mm -hmm. Here you go. This is Sal Bukhari, Volume 4, Book 54, Hadith 516. Here's the link, guys. I'm not lying. Here's a link. So I'm going to send to you in private chat as well. I'm going to read it for you. Ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. This guy's getting jealous. He thinks I'm flirting with you because he's jealous. He's ugly like a monkey. And he was one of those that were going to stone, but this monkey got away. Okay. Are you laughing at him? <laughs> well, here you go. I'm not Muhammad. She's, uh, she's young enough to be my granddaughter. Muhammad is the bastard who molested a nine-year-old i'm not muhammad she's young enough to be my granddaughter all right you ready sister here is uh, why you started water in and out of your nose because satan likes to sleep in people's noses all right mm -hmm. al -Bukhari. V uh, narrated abu huraira the prophet said if any one of you rouses from sleep and performs the ablution he should wash his nose by putting water in it and then blowing out thrice three times because satan has stayed in the upper part of his nose all night so, sister, I want to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Is Satan in everybody's nose? Yes, definitely. Right? Because if you got to pour water in and out of your nose, to flush like, it, and then yeah. your mother has to do it, and your father has to do it, and everyone. So Satan sleeps in over 7 billion noses? Yeah, definitely. And we have so to flush Satan's out. omnipresent? So if I don't... Snort water in and on my nose. Does that mean Satan is still in my nose right now? Is which why I'm having a hard time breathing? <laughs> okay, so this is the stupid religion. Time for you to leave it. Study the Bible. Start reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Read about Jesus' life, and you're going to fall in love with him. So is there any other questions you need? Because that guy got jealous. He wanted to marry you because <laughs> he thinks that you're a Shia because his mother is I'm known not Shia. Shia. No, but he thought you're Shia because his mother does muta with the Shia in Iran. So he's mm -hmm. thinking maybe you're one of them. He doesn't know. You don't follow Allah and his monkey, Muhammad. <laughs> well, thank you so much for talking to me. I really appreciate it. God bless you. Take care. Okay. Come back. Let me know if you have more questions. Remember here, one thing. Ahad. Ahad. All right, sister. God bless you. All right. Take care. Thank you so much. And if we do...